afternoon entitled The Use of Focus Conversation and Critical Reflection Models in Phenomenographic Part uh, for the Typographical Error. It's Phenomenographic Research, uh, a kind of uh, qualitative research. Okay. Um, before, uh, focus conversation and critical reflections are used only for metacognitive uh, assessments or reflective assessments. In the years in research, I managed to use focus conversation and critical reflection models as uh, methods of data gathering for phenomenographic research. And that will be the basis of my uh, presentation this afternoon. So the goal of this presentation is for you to introduce the background and theory behind focus conversation, specifically the ORID model, and to introduce the levels of ORID, to introduce the background of critical reflection, specifically the DEAL model uh, and its three levels, and to share examples of the application of ORID and DEAL models in its uh, limitations. The examples that I'll be showing are my personal um, examples or uh, samples of my research. So let's start with focus conversation. Focus conversation is a structured process that helps a group journey through a conversation together. It intentionally moves through a topic beginning with things that can be observed or facts and data and gets all the voices in the room to share simple observations. Therefore, you can say that focus conversation could be used or utilized when the participants of the study had been exposed to uh, a service learning activity or an exposure in 1984. And uh, this only model of focus conversation involves four domains, the objective domain, reflective, interpretive, and decisional. Okay? And the objective mode pertains about the data that could be gathered by the census, the five senses, and the reflective would be how the participants felt during the experience, and then the head would be how they make meaning out of the experience, and the decisional mode is their action that they would take after the experience. It is a method that involves answering through conversation a series of questions organized into four phases, which I have mentioned, that draw upon ways in which human process and make judgments about information while promoting order and systematic dialogue. Is this why I said a while ago that this ORIC model was used before as uh, metacognitive um, assessment of experiences, which later became a method of data collection as in the qualitative research, instead of doing thematic analysis as to analyze the data or to cluster the data, you need not do thematic analysis because the themes would be uh, these four. The themes would, be, would fall under these four domains or areas. <coughs> Or it's based on the way the brain takes in information. Of course, the information would come through our senses. Then, okay, the experience, which talks about how you feel, okay, and then the thought process and the activities that happen during the experience. And then how you perceive the experiences in terms of their responses to the activities that were done how they judge the activity, and that will lead to a decision, okay, which is the last phase, which is the decision making. Hence, we complete the four phases or domains of or We are able to gather their answers following this sequence, then we could capture the experience and make meaning out of it, okay? So, these are just, just quickly, Let's go through the objective mode. This pertains to the, uh, getting the process, getting the raw data, what they have perceived, okay, and then uh, the facts that they have gathered on the situation and what they have observed. 
Okay. The next mode is the reflective mode, which pertains to the immediate response <clears throat> from what they have observed and experienced. Okay. This is what but their heart would be sensing. The interpretive mode is what the mind would be processing after. This would answer the questions about, so what does the experience mean? What, does the, what values are activated? What is the significance of the experience? And what are the implications? And what are your insights about the experience? And lastly, the, the decisional mode. This mode is about making decisions or choosing actions, whether what to do next, what not to do, and what has been learned, and what commitment is elicited upon doing the experience. So, so with strategic insight, sorry. Okay. So just to present it in a different way, comparing the different modes. So when you get the facts and sensory impressions, that's the objective mode. Reflective mode would be the personal reactions, emotions, and images that emerge during the experience. As you make meaning and form values and draw on the experience uh, and look at its significance and implications of the interpretive. And the next steps to do after the experience will be the decision of law. Okay. What are the strengths of Orient? Orient allows the group to move easily and quickly to a deeper discussion level. As opposed with focus group discussion or FGD. Since here we are uh, working on how the brain works, it would be easily uh, it would be easier to facilitate a focused conversation than a focused group discussion. Okay? We be used to effectively discuss difficult or tense issues in a lighter way. It allows careful progression for collective consciousness to take place and enables group to discuss important topics in a non-confrontational style and sets a clear executive context for a topic. But this is limited only for experiences that have been exposed to okay, of a certain group of people. Okay, it may not yield a consensus since you may be you may be subjected to a similar experience, but you'd have different reactions or different um, takes on the actual experience. Effective only for specific and commonly shared topics. Effective only for short periods of time. Difficult to go beyond 45 minutes without losing the group's attention. And this is a verbal method. No visuals, particularly aesthetic to engage the participants. And requires all participants to carefully pay attention and trap all comments, as the term would imply it's a focused conversation thing. Sample research work, okay, uh, an author has used the focused conversation method in faculty meetings about curriculum revision, where data have included existing courses, course learning objectives, Etc. So this implies that all the participants are aware of what is happening in that certain situation. Another example from the literature is that of Carres et al. 2020, which used focus conversation style interviews to collect data. Okay. The thematic analysis done is simple. Uh, the thematic analysis done was simple because it being use of four themes or four domains as the themes that emerge. This is my uh, sample work. Uh, um, so, assessment of service learning in ecology class using the Orient model. So, this has been published in um, the International Journal. Uh, so, just to uh, prove to you that a simple phenomenographic research using the Orient model would be this publishable. Okay, and the way that with our institution, uh, I made a phenomenographic study titled Getting a Grasp of the Experiences of Volunteers to the Teachers in our data center. 
and a lot of the greater center. And this also made use of the already model of focus conversation as the data gathering method for the this has been published also in an international journal. Okay, another example is the assessment of learning gains from a service that will be looking at the data as a development course. Okay, published in the Iamura International, International Journal of Education. Okay, so this we use a audit uh, model of focus conversation as well. The next uh, model is the critical reflection uh, using the DEAL model. The DEAL pertains to describe, examine, and articulate learning. Almost similar to ORIN, but this time instead of doing focused conversation, okay, the participants are uh, are drawn to do critical reflection by themselves. Okay, using this model. Okay, so this is best used for service learning and for community service activities. The three steps involved in the deal model are describe the experience, examine the experience, and articulate the learning out of the experience. This model works well for experiential, civic, or service learning related activities. Okay, so this is the diagram of how the deal model for critical reflection is done. Step one is to describe the experience. The task you give to your participants is to objectively describe a service learning experience or an experiential learning thing. You prompt them with questions, what did you do? What, why did you do it? When did the experience take place? Where did it take place? Who else was there? Who wasn't there? What was communicated by you uh, or others? What does happen that might be important? This, like what I've said a while ago, is more of mental vision or assessing how we learn through learning. The third, uh, the second step is examine. The task is for your participants to examine the experience by category of learning goals, such as personal growth. How did the experience help you grow? How does it connect with your academic performance or how did it enhance your academic? And then civic engagement. Potential prompts could be for personal growth. What assumptions did you make? What personal strengths in there emerged uh, as you participated? What were the limitations? Okay, and so on. The third step is for them to, as they reflect, articulate their learning. The task is using responses in steps one and two, they have to verbalize what learning has occurred, linking it back to the original learning objective. If you're doing this for service learning and for other uh, learning, uh, teaching learning um, experiences, it has to go back to what is the original objective of the lesson. Potential props will be what did you learn, okay? Why does it matter? What should be done in the light of this experience? Express an important learning, not just a statement of fact. They have to provide a clear and correct explanation of the concepts they have learned, okay, in the experience. Explaining your understanding the concepts of such things that you intended to, for them to learn. Connect the learning to specific activities that gave rise to it, and make it clear uh, what happened in the context of the experience. This is how we process the learning experience. Sample work would be uh, what that I did with my physical therapy students, okay, when I uh, deployed them to uh, a rehabilitation center for those uh, psychiatric patients. The title of the study is Getting a Dive into a Halfway House, segmenting PD students' experiences with those on the mend. So this uh, is a qualitative study, a phenomenographic research, which made use of uh, the deal model of critical reflection. Okay, so these are other sample uh, works. So let me conclude. 
as uh, by saying that as a research method, using boring starts a logical as a logical order of thinking, interpretation, learning and decision making compared with more random or based on scoring type approaches like focus group discussion. It focuses a conversation that takes the interviewer and interviewees on a semi-structured systematic learning and decision making journey together of mutual discovery. And the deal model, okay, as a three-step process for structuring reflection activities that can improve learning outcomes if you're using it as an assessment process. It involves asking one to describe his experience objectively by answering the questions who, what, where, and why, examining their experiences, and lastly, they have to articulate what they have learned through the experience. Capturing all their answers to this reflection and to this focused conversation, then you can come up with phenomenographic research. These are the references, and thank you very much for listening.